Andrew Constantine, I'm a junior. I'm Charlotte Abbott, and I'm a junior. I'm Caitlin Reed, and I'm a senior. I'm Jordan Whitey, and I'm a sophomore. I'm Jim Connolly, and I'm a junior. And we are Charter Jefferson Awards Council. So last June, our Executive Council met to discuss where we wanted to take our council in the following year. And because our former moderator had just been selected to be our school's new vice president, we realized that we had a unique opportunity to really revamp our council under new leadership. We decided that the main focus of our vision this year would be to improve the experience we provide to our council members. So instead of leaving the majority of the planning of events solely to executive council members, we began shifting the responsibilities to underclassmen to allow them to take on greater responsibility under the guidance of upperclassmen. Additionally, we chose to engage in more true service in our local community because we believe it's absolutely imperative for members to directly see how their efforts can impact the community. While our council has a hierarchy of executive council, objective heads, and council members, we pride ourselves in incorporating a friendly, roundtable atmosphere in which all members bounce ideas off each other in order to come up with the best execution methods. In addition, we gained tremendous success last year while using theme months, so we decided to continue this technique by assigning a team of mainly underclassmen to plan the various service events that would engage the school community. Both of these practices foster leadership growth and development within our council. So here's how our council's broken down. First, we have the executive council, which meets daily to oversee all events and functions, and then we subdivide into seven other committees. With the help of social media outlets, the charter website, newsletters, and student TV broadcasts called 10 Minutes, Objective One was able to promote leadership and spread volunteerism throughout our community. More specific to the B Positive Chartathon, we held multiple school wide assemblies and plastered our walls with the I Support Be Positive Because campaign. Objective Two strives to keep council funds so that we can excite our members about service. So this year at Avon, we went to North Bay Adventure Camp for a leadership retreat, to Times Square during December, hosted an ugly Christmas sweater party, and attended both the UD Leadership Conference and the Delaware PTA's Youth Summit. This year, Objective 3 implemented a secondary volunteer council, which exposed greater serving opportunities to charter students. Objective 4 helped our council increase our financial impact tremendously by employing innovative programs such as a 50-50 raffle, a car wash, and pretzel and hot chocolate sales. In addition to maintaining a strong grasp on communication within the charter community, Objective 5 told our stories to the outside community by using sources such as Delaware Online, the News Journal, Podcasting Community News, Community Crossfire, Social Media, and BuzzFeed. Objective 6 not only expanded, but also strengthened the Students in Action program at many schools, both locally and nationally, with the help of technology. In hopes of spur creativity with our council, four of our executive members actually took a creative thinking inspired class called Think Tank, which helped us to come up with many innovative ways to enhance all of our events. So after working extensively with the Be Positive Foundation, this year we decided we wanted to raise not only funds for childhood cancer research, but also awareness. We accomplished this by streaming the True 365 informational video during one of our Be Positive assemblies, and by also encouraging students to sign a petition and a letter to Senator Coons. Because Senator Coons is on the Senate's Appropriations Committee, he has the ability to directly reapportion funds to childhood cancer research. Um, and just over a week after our letters were received, the Gabriella Miller Kids First Research Act was passed in both houses of Congress, allocating $126 million to childhood cancer research. Coincidence? By providing events like service days, volunteer functions like the Heart Gal, and advertisements like our school bulletin board, our council increased our school's volunteerism up 1,000 hours from last year. We calculated the 37,900 hours by having each student complete a survey. This also equates to just under $900,000 of financial impact. Our council bolstered our relationships with organizations that we've worked with in the past. We had frequent meetings with the leaders of the Be Positive Foundation, Nora Enterprises, and Kind of Kids in order to improve from our past efforts. In addition, we forged new relationships with the Delaware Children's Museum and the Audi Pond Children's Hospital, and we look forward to future correspondences. This year, we implemented Go For The Goals Kind to Kids program, which enables our trained volunteers to deliver toys and gift cards to children diagnosed with cancer. This is the program's first time in Alfred I. DuPont The addition of a winter ball to our social atmosphere allowed for a greater presence in our school community. Our council hosts two of the three major dances at Charter, and by changing the venue of this particular dance to the Delaware Children's Museum, sparked the interest of Charter students. After learning about the museum and its mission, we now have many students that volunteer at the DCF. It's great to see our direct impact that we have on our peers, and it has enlightened all of us about how our government allocates money to earmarks like the DCF. By having monthly school-wide volunteer functions, our council was able to help charter students increase their personal volunteerism. This also allowed for a wide array of students, including those not selected for this year's council, to contribute to 
to a variety of volunteer events. We worked with over 20 different organizations this year, including one of our own members' families, Jack Langsinger from our Strong Foundation. In addition to holding a toy drive, our council aided kind of kids in its largest fundraiser, a Halloween group of 5K. We strongly encourage not only charter students, but students from many other schools to come out and run in this entertaining event. And we had actually over 50 charter students participate in this 5K. So in an effort to generate publicity over the success of our View Positive Charterthon, we decided to create BuzzFeed articles to specifically target high schoolers and recent alumni in a unique medium. The beauty of BuzzFeed is that it's designed to work in tandem with social media. So because of this instantaneous yet practically effortless way in which it reaches a much larger audience than a traditional news outlet, employing BuzzFeed really helped us unite our school community over our accomplishment. My favorite part about the whole thing was seeing all my friends, family, teachers, even students from other schools sharing the article and applauding our work for the Positive Foundation. This year, we were able to take a leadership role in organizing NOR Enterprise's annual turkey drive. We facilitated the collaboration between many high schools, middle schools, and elementary schools across the state who would further the cause. For me, just seeing the genuine looks of happiness on the elderly recipients' faces made me realize just how worthwhile this cause really is. This year we really expanded our Be Positive Charterthon. We capitalized on our unique situation with the Cap Calories School of the Arts and invited them to join us in the fight against childhood cancer. This doubled our potential fundraisers while simultaneously establishing another connection with the local school. We also negotiated a deal with our administration that allowed us to have a half day if 70% of the student body and staff participated in raising funds. So this really allowed our student body to get behind the cause and more than double last year's total. Uh, we also created a promotional video, appointed flyers, and initiated a local, regional, and national social media campaign in conjunction with our partner SA Schools. So these innovations really allowed us to raise a substantial amount of awareness and over $27,000 for the Be Positive Foundation. As Caitlin said, after the collaboration with CAP on the Be Positive Dance, they became interested in jump-starting a program at their school. We set up meetings to discuss and explain the Students in Action program. We then allowed them to attend a council planning period where they were actually able to see our council in action. This sealed the deal. We also utilized Charter's National Honor Society's volunteer base and collaborated with Senior Council on 10 minutes after bonding on the North Bay Adventure Camp trip. We also incorporated other parties such as Wistus Bank, our Be Positive Charathon sponsors, Easter Seals, and the Delaware Youth Leadership Network. So these partnerships allow us to have additional support at all of our events while simultaneously spreading the mission of the SAA program in the local community. As our year comes to an end, we still have much to look forward to after the competition is over. Our end of the year banquet celebrates the monthly SIA winners, and we also have the unique opportunity to give out a scholarship to a student who exemplifies both leadership and volunteerism in our community. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Lady Mitchell from Be Positive for coming, and thank you so much to our moderator, Mrs. Cody.
well before the actual event takes place. We learned, um, we tried to recruit many schools and uh, it really takes the initiative 